<laughs> Today on Give Me Shelter. It's okay, it's okay. After a bitter cold sweeps across the south, Dee Dee scrambles to rescue a family of free roaming cats before they freeze. Okay, so there's a black and white one, and we haven't seen that one, have we? A group of challenging dogs is transported to pet helpers in an effort to prevent them from being euthanized. But did the staff get more than they bargained for? Hey, come here, stop. She's teaching him to be rough. Dee Dee has just received a call from an acquaintance about a family of free roaming cats outside an assisted living center. To save them from the cold and prevent overpopulation, she must trap the kittens and their mother as soon as possible. I got involved in the trap neuter release program through Pet Helpers. Trap neuter release is basically a program that assists in getting community cats as well as feral cats fixed meaning spayed and neutered, vaccinated, air tip, and putting them back into the community. A bitter cold has just swept through the south. Dee Dee is worried that two of the four kittens may not have made it through the night. Yeah, I lose sleep thinking about this stuff a lot of the times, knowing that they're out there cold and trying to stay warm and that kind of thing. And, and I'm just hoping that they, that they just, one, made it through the night. Can we pick them up with our hands? Now, I wouldn't try it because I, you know, they're kind of scared and um, they can tear you up. I think that we could get the kitten, don't you? It's just important and critical to trap them in a humane trap so that you don't want to get bitten or scratched and then be sent to the hospital for injuries. There goes the mother. Where is she going? She's going that way. Kitty, kitty, come on, mommy. Come on. It's okay. She went into the bushes. Danya has just transferred a group of dogs from an overcrowded shelter. In an effort to prevent the dogs from being euthanized, pet helpers volunteered to take the dogs in but now they are facing the same overcrowding issue, and some of the dogs might be a challenge. We are scrambling right now to find housing. We don't know uh, where we're gonna put everybody. Sometimes even when we don't have as much space as we'd like to to do a transport, we'll jump in anyways. Whether it's to help a shelter move towards a no-kill movement, whether it's to prevent dogs from being euthanized, sometimes we have to almost pack them in like sardines to save a couple more lives. Um, do you want to go and set him up in my office? Mm -hmm. okay. Who's the skittish dog? The big brown the huge, pit. Like, the huge brown. The one that ran away? Yes. The one oh, that tried to escape. he's not skittish. Don, I can't eat. I'm barely blocking from going out the kennel. Oh. Yeah, he's going to have to be. No. I'm going to go work with him right now. I'm going to fix that. Okay. No, go, I mean, go open the door. We've got this dog that might possibly try and bolt out with inexperienced volunteers, and the last thing we need is a dog running around on the floor, and we've got this much barking. And if we've got dogs, you know, that are getting away from volunteers that are running around on the floor, and then we have another possibly dog reactive dog that's being walked at the moment, you know, it could turn into a fight, it could turn into injuries. <laughs> That little kitten is still over there at the door. You want me to pick a, pick the kitten up? I can. I am set on using traps because that is the, the only way that I am going to do it personally. I've experienced things that can happen that go wrong. I don't want anybody to be hurt. I don't want her to be hurt. I don't want to be hurt. You pick them up by the scruff of the neck and they twist around and turn around and scratch you, you're going to 
drop them or they're going to turn around and somehow bite you. What I'd like to do is to um, put this food in here mm -hmm. and let's just kind of walk off a little bit. Oh yeah. Here comes the other little baby going in. There he goes. The little orange kitty cat is sniffing around the trap. I think he's going to probably go in. that one down. He's not getting out of there. So, got three more to go. Kitty, kitty. Come on. Psst, psst, psst. I'm hoping that any of them will come out with the food being shaken. I hope they feel safe enough to come out. We'll see what happens. Kitty, kitty. Psst, 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 psst. Come on. Kitty, kitty. kitty. Hey. Quite a lot of the bushes. The gray and white kitten was right here in the bushes, and it just went in the pipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get Nanette to come back in, hang out inside where it's quiet out there, so maybe they'll feel safe enough to come out. OK. She's getting ready to go in, and she's sniffing. So I'm going to go and check out this alleged escape artist and see how bad he actually is. You're so skittish! Turns out that I really don't think he is that bad at all. I'm not sure if it was an environmental thing with the other shelter or the other uh, staff members, but he is already settling down here and I don't really anticipate him being such a problem. about that dog is nothing. He is totally fine. <laughs> okay. He's to use like giving me a bath with his tongue. Well as soon as a volunteer lets him run around the adoption floor, I'll come grab. <laughs> Donya just came back and gave him her like stamp of approval. So you know maybe the whole feel of this shelter and you know the way our kennels are set up, maybe that'll actually work for him. back here right now here it's um the one that had discharge the, the okay. brown one and then little mini captain <laughs> all dogs bark and you know a lot of dogs are more vocal than others and even when you know, a real rowdy dog starts to bark even the dogs that are always quiet and never bark they'll start barking and so once that starts, it's really a chain reaction. Everybody's loud, everybody's noisy. Before I got them in the van, they had started to have concerns about him being dog aggressive. So we pulled them off the van and I said, no, 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 we're gonna just test them and I should start doing that too, testing them right outside and seeing. But he's super mouthy. Like he is, I don't think he's aggressive, but immediately he, he jumped on the hound and was like, ah! Like, mouthing yeah. them all up. Gemini, too, though, yeah. was a nutcase, and she was our, like, safer, you know, our assessment dog, yeah, so. <laughs> Gemini was really reactive, but then outside the cage, she actually was one of our best behaved dogs. I think we'll just have to let it play out and hope for the best and, and just really keep our fingers crossed that it is just cage reactivity. Look at that. Isn't that not sweet? The mommy kitty is a very smart little girl. 
but if she fears that something's going on or something's wrong, she will haul tail. And usually they haul tail with her. They know something's going on. They think that um, there, there's a threat, obviously. I think that we would be, have, have better luck just putting food in the bowl and we sit there in the rocking chair and let them come up. That's what they're accustomed to doing. And then do you throw a sheet over them then? No, I don't handle them. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> uh, for safety reasons, and you know, it's, it's, I've got, see my finger? That's, oh my that's a, from a cat bite. That's from a cat bite. See the difference? Well, if you want to go out there and try to get them over, come over, that's fine. You can do that. They're used to you being, you can sit there and. Okay. Hey, kitty kitty. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Pick her up? Can you? She probably will, will not like it. Come on. Oh. What do I do now? Hey, it's okay. What do you want me to do? It's okay, it's all right. Maybe I can pat it and touch it and put it in the trap manually. Hi, baby. Come here. Hey, darling. Come here. Come here. Okay, what do you do? She's getting a little antsy right now. is unsure if it is safe enough for her to grab the mother cat and place her in the trap. If she isn't careful, she could end up getting bitten or scratched, which can often lead to a serious infection and injury. Come on. Come on. Come on. If I don't catch her now, Lord only knows she, she may end up pregnant again. So I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking, hmm, do I need to go ahead and just scruff her and put her in the trap? I, I guess I'm taking a risk, but I'm willing to take that chance, I guess. She was, seemed comfortable enough with me doing that to her. So when she just didn't move after I did it, I just went ahead and made the decision to put her in the trap. So what will happen now? We're gonna have to try to catch the babies tonight. The babies will come out. They will. I think so. Well, we'll set the drop trap up tonight. That's all that, that I mean. It's gonna be cold. Yeah. Okay, so there's a black and white one, a gray and white one, and what's the other color? The little Mixed. torty? Yeah. Okay, like her. And we haven't seen that one, have we? I'm gonna just go ahead and cut my losses now. I got two cats. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drive them to the clinic. I need to get back there now because uh, they usually ask me to drop them off at 10, and uh, it's going on 11 o'clock now. Dee Dee is setting up traps in the hope that the remaining kittens will be captured overnight. For now, the main focus is getting the kitten and his mother to the shelter with fingers crossed that they are both healthy and the kitten is young enough to be socialized and adopted. The staff has managed to find space for the dogs from today's transport and are handling some of the more challenging cases. A feral puppy named Odie is afraid of humans and will need to be socialized immediately. Trying to figure out if we're going to need to put him into foster care because he is, he's, he's just on that fence where he's skittish enough, not with the other dogs, obviously, with people that he's just, he just pulls away, you know, and I think if we throw him in a kennel, it, I don't know if he's going to get enough socialization. He's of age to, to be neutered and be placed on the adoption floor, but I'm kind of skittish to do that on the simple fact that he he's not very human friendly. Now we have this situation of this cute little dog that is highly adoptable in looks, but behavior wise, he has a long way to go. It's always incredible to me how feral and skittish dogs that open up to other dogs. To other dogs. Yeah. And they really can learn from them to be social with people. 
So the best thing to do with an under-socialized dog is to bring another dog into the picture. It helps them feel comfortable and confident, and they also can then pick up on that dog's behavior toward people, and they'll, they'll be more likely to do well with people. Hey, come here, stop. Let me go try to maybe, I'm gonna try to get a different dog because she, she's teaching him to be rough. The dog that we chose was, is a wonderful dog. She just plays a little rough. That's not gonna be good for Odie either because the last thing we need to do is teach him to, from fear to aggression. Um, aggression's definitely not the way we wanna go, so we're gonna try another dog. Yeah, this is another dog from the transport, so we'll see. Hey, baby. Oh, I don't even know if he's good with dogs. <laughs> Put your hackles down. There's no need for hackles. No need for those. Don't be mean. He may need an older dog. Hey. The second dog um, wasn't too happy about Odie. Um, he really didn't want to be bothered with this puppy, which is typical for older dogs. Who is this? That's another one from the transport today. Well, but do you think if we put him in our foster, like, do you think there's an aspect that he'll bond to that one person, opposed to if we put him on the floor and somebody takes him home every night, that he'll get used to different people? Therefore, when somebody approaches him, that he might be used to that? I think that's a great point. Because I've there's... taken dogs home before that are really, really scared and fostered them for months, and they're fine with me. Yes. That's a good point. But as soon as I put them on the floor, they're like, ah, oh, who is these people touching me? He really needs to learn right now that all humans are good. Her point of making sure that we transfer the puppy to a different home every night will ensure that that happens. It's always a gamble when you have socialization needs with dogs. I am going to put my faith in the staff and just hope for the best that we're able to f fix this puppy. Dee Dee has just arrived at the spay neuter clinic with the mother cat and one of her four kittens. She is still unsure if the kitten is young enough to be socialized and adopted or if he will need to be released back with his mother. We're gonna take that little orange and white one in. I'm gonna foster him, take him home with me after he's fixed and I'll make a determination as to whether I can turn him around and if I can't, we'll release, I'll have to bring him back in, get him an ear tip and turn, and turn him out. Okay. Ear tipping is a means in which the veterinarian will trim off the very tip of the cat's ear to visually see that that cat has been spayed or neutered. I don't want to ear tip the kitten yet because I want to see if he's able to be adopted out. If he's not, then we'll go back and ear tip him. The age of these kittens uh, is about three months old, and typically that is kind of beyond taming them up. Um, and it's questionable whether the shelter will even take them at that age. But if they're friendly enough, well, I'm willing to foster them. The mother will get an ear tip. And do microchip her okay. and register everything to me. Okay. Assisted living facility manager has asked the cat be brought back to the facility. She'll be happy there being cared for. As far as the kitten is concerned, I've got to make a decision as to whether this kitten is going to be able to be um, adopted out. If he's not able to be adopted out, then I will get him fixed and take him back and release him back. Hey, sweet girl. Yeah, I know you're stressed out, baby. You still have to spend the night out in the cold. Are you in a nice, warm place right now? You know, I, I have a concern about all the cats out there and, and it being as cold as it, it was last night. I just hope that they're, they're going to hang in there and be able to survive the cold tonight. Odie has spent the night at six different foster homes over the last week. Since being neutered, vaccinated, and socialized, he is well on his way to being fully domesticated and ready for adoption. Look, he's already looking and sitting right next yeah, to you. So I can't believe that in yeah. one week. So this is socialization at its best. It is quite amazing that in just one week's time he is already coming when he's called and looking to people. I'm really pleased with what progress he's made. So maybe we should try to focus on finding him a home 
that has another dog, a social yeah. dog. Yeah, I don't think he needs to be an only dog home. He's, I totally agree. At that age, it's kind of on the fence. He could have went either way. He could have totally rejected human affection, but luckily for us and him, he embraced human affection and has now turned into this sweet, lovable puppy who is going to be highly adoptable. I think that uh, we definitely made the right choice. Yeah, I do too. You, can, you can't save everybody, but you can surely save one, and you did. You saved him, and now he's going to be great. I am very glad that I saved him. He is adorable, and he really deserved a chance. Oh. Hey. <laughs> Look at your feet in there. Both the mother and her kitten have been issued a clean bill of health and were spayed and neutered. After fostering the kitten for a few days, Dee Dee determined that he is friendly enough to be adopted, and the mother was returned to the assisted living center. Dee Dee was also able to trap another kitten and bring her into the shelter to be spayed and vaccinated. It's all about saving lives, controlling the population, cutting down on diseases, and making cats happy, because that's, that's really what it's about. I am really relieved that I work for an organization that always goes above and beyond and takes each case individual and puts together individual plans for those animals. We don't run like a factory here. We're, we're not trying to just mass produce homes for these animals. We want to make sure that the animal, the people, and ourselves are all set up for successful placement.